Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be very brief because uh, there is not much time. I'm going to present in brief the contribution of Muslims to science and what is the Indian scenario. In fact, concentrating entirely on the Indian scenario. Since my election to the various fellowships of the India, Indian science, whenever I attended the meeting of these academies, I felt very lonely in the sense that there were hardly one or two Muslims. Then I started looking into the yearbook which is published by each one of them and it was very revealing. I will give you those details later. And as you all know that prior to the arrival of great Mughals in India, Muslims were already there in sufficiently large number. And after the independence, along with independence, the partition also took place. And the present status of the population of India, which is one billion, the population of Muslims, as per the estimates given by the government, is nearly 12 percent. But some other estimates put it to be anywhere between 15 to 20 percent. I tried to work out from the yearbooks of the various academies and as some of you may already be aware that in India since the 1930s we have three science academies and the oldest of this although all were established with a gap of one or two years the first one the Allahabad Academy uh, which is called as the National Academy of Sciences India was established in the year 1930. The other one is the Indian Academy of Sciences Bangalore and the third one is the National Science Academy New Delhi, INSA. The last two mentioned academies elect usually 20 to 30 fellows, very rarely 30s, sometimes even maybe less than 50. But the Allahabad Academy elects some 50 to 60 fellows and the, as a result of this, the Allahabad Academy has some 1200 fellows on its roll while the Bangalore Academy has some 860 and INSA, the Indian National Science Academy, which is presently in Delhi, although it is started from Kolkata, but presently it is in Delhi for the last 60 or more years, has only 754 fellows. And when we look at the number of Muslim scientists who have made to these academies, it is very, very pathic, path pathetical or very pathetic. The, in the election of uh, these, uh, of the fellows in these three academies, the impact factor of the journal and the citation index are all variably used as the important criteria as in any other international academy. The selection process in these academies, I am trying to emphasize this point, is very fair and is free from all kinds of biases. To the best of my knowledge and belief as I was myself part of this selection process for a number of years. In addition to this, the Third World Academy of Sciences, now the World Academy of Sciences, which is located in Italy, and the Royal Society of London, I also looked into these two societies for Muslim fellowships. 
and the result of all the search has been very disappointing. Out of total 1,200 fellowship in the Allahabad Academy, there are only 30 <coughs> Muslims. While in the Bangalore Academy, where we have 860 fellows, there are only 14 Muslims. And in the uh, M uh, Delhi Academy, there are 15 Muslims, which makes a total of 59 Muslims, or 59 fellowships, actually, and out of 2,814 total fellowships of all the three academies put together. And if you calculate the percentage, it will come to 2%, which is, unfortunately, more or less same as the percentage of Muslims in the government and other services. The TOAS Fellowship has been awarded only to 40 Indian Muslims, uh, sorry, only to four Indian Muslims so far, and only one Muslim, namely Professor Obas Siddiqui, an old boy of the Aligarh Muslim University, has been elected to the Fellowship of Royal Society of London. I'm talking of the scenario after post-independence, in the post-independent India. Though Muslims have been elected to a total of 63 fellowships, adding the four of the TOAS and excluding the F FRS, because this is a rarity, the fellowship comes to 63. But when we look at the actual number of scientists that are involved, it is, is still very pathetic because it is only, there are only 35 persons who are involved. It's 59, 63 fellowships, but only 35 persons are involved. This is due to the fact that four of these scientists have four fellowships each, and all these are biological scientists, and three of these are from the Aligarh Muslim University. I'm trying to highlight the contributions of Aligarh Muslim University also alongside, namely Professor Obas Siddiqui, S.Z. Qasim, your humble self, and Professor, uh, Dr. Ahtisham. Four other scientists have three fellowships each, and two of these are incidentally from Aligarh Muslim University. Eight scientists have two fellowships each, and 19 have only one fellowship each, and that too largely of the Allahabad Academy, which have their standards not really up to that level as that of the Bangalore and Delhi academies. Of these 19, 10 are from AMU. That this, these data alone speak of the substantial, I'm, I have put substantial within inverted commas because anyway the contribution on the whole is never substantial, of the Aligarh Muslim University, which was established in the late 19th century by Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, only as a school, and then it became the Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College during his lifetime. And his co-workers later on were able to raise it to the status of Aligarh Muslim University, which all of you know, in the year 1920. The great seat of learning has contributed maximum to the education of Muslims in India, not only in all areas of sciences, but in all spheres of education. When we look at the age profile of the Indian Muslims elected to the fellowship, it is, is still very, very depressing to note that 12 of these scientists are out, uh, uh, these scientists out of 35 are above 70 years of age and are not doing much science any longer, with one or two rare exceptions. Nine fellows are above 60 years of age and only a few of these may still be active. I know a few are active. 12 of these scientists are above 50, which is good because it is these scientists who are actually doing or contributing to the maximum. 
it is rather unfortunate this part is very very unfortunate that only two are above 40 years and none are below 40 years of age there are a number of scientists from other communities who are in the 40 year, 40 years or less the last figure of two clearly indicates that younger scientists or younger muslims are not either, either not interested in doing any science or if they are at all interested may not be doing science at that level which could fetch them the fellowship of the academies of sciences in India and abroad. In all sciences but more so in the biological sciences the contributions of those who were either educated at the Aligarh Muslim University or may have been educated elsewhere but have worked or are still working in Aligarh their contributions are maximum and it is their contribution which really is the meat of whatever little we have done. And the areas in which their work is significant, I will give you quickly a few examples, are in the area of genetics, cell and molecular biology, plant protection and nematology in particular and fisheries including oceanography in general. If you look at the graph, uh, if you look at the table I, where I have put all the three, uh, three academies including TWAS and the stars indicate the fellowships that they have found, that, that they have uh, been elected to, uh, the situation will be very clear that the Allahabad has maximum number and the Delhi Academy and the uh, uh, Delhi Academy and the Bangalore Academy have either 14 or 15. And if you, as I said that, in the Allahabad Academy, some 50 to 60 fellows are elected, whereas in other academies, 14 or 15 usually. So if you join the two, the figure comes to say. And in this other tables, I have given the names of those scientists and their specializations. I'll run quickly because I, Gulshan would definitely want some time for questions or at least before 12.30. These are the various areas. This is the Delhi Academy where we have 15 fellows. This is the Bangalore Academy where we have 14 fellows. Now if we look at the Third World Academy of Sciences, total fellowship in a particular, I think it was year 2005, were 604, Indian fellows were 132 and out of that Muslim fellows only 4, that is around 3%. Total Muslim fellows from Pakistan, at that point I think there were 31 and in another country, Indonesia, which has slightly more population of Muslims than India, there was only one fellow. And all the 4 fellows of TOAS are in the area of biology. Agriculture also is an area of biology. And incidentally, the two senior persons, Obas Siddiqui and S. Uh, Zahur Qasim, happen to be my teachers. Atasham is a comparatively young person. He had no connection from Aligarh, but all the other three persons are from Aligarh. And if you look at the Aligarh contribution, you can see that people who have worked and studied in Aligarh is very, there are two people who consistently re, uh, worked and remained in Aligarh. Then we have people who studied in Aligarh but worked elsewhere. Then we have other, then we have people who studied elsewhere but worked in AMU, just one person. And people who studied elsewhere and worked elsewhere, there are few people. But maximum contribution, whatever little Muslims have done, is from Aligarh. Areas of research also in these, you will see that genetics, molecular biology, animal and human and plant breeding and also viruses, they all are quite a few of people. Uh, plant protection, nematology, marine biology, uh, some other areas. 
there is a mistake, sorry, this is uh, this. in the second column, it should be four fellowship, but uh, it should be three fellowship, but four persons. Four persons have four fellowship, three persons have four fellowships, eight have two, and 19 have one. Similarly, people who are above 70 years, there are 12 people, above 69, above 50, 12, and above 42. If we look at these some figures, really we feel that Muslims are not doing much in science, are not getting attracted towards science. Recently when I was involved in setting up a, a new university in which the population of, in which these students are 99.9% .9 Muslims, for arts, out of the 26,000 students, and now, now 57,000 students, present position is 90% are in arts, social sciences. Maybe f only 5% in science, they are attracted towards science in that university, and maybe 5 or 6% in commerce. I don't know what is the reason why Muslims are not coming towards science. The analysis that I have done of the Muslims' contribution to science. There may be many people will say that you have taken the example of academy, which may not be correct. There are other parameters also. I ag agree that. But this is one very important parameter. And that indicates the peop certain people who have attained that status. Well, we all feel that more Muslims are attracted towards science. There are three universities also, I would like to, why I was highlighting Aligarh, because I am involved there, I have spent all my life there, I am spending whatever little life left in uh, doing whatever I can do. But there are two other universities, seen as an offshoot of Aligarh Muslim University, one is Jamia Millia Islamia, the other is Jamia Hamdard, and there is one fellow of the Allahabad Academy in Jamia Millia Islamia, and two fellows of the uh, Allahabad Academy of Sciences uh, in uh, Jamia Hamdan. So not much significant. And, and they were all, these three persons were actually educated in Aligarh. So if you look at, uh, at that, there is not so, or there is uh, zero contribution from these two universities. Whatever contribution we have, it is maximum from Aligarh Muslim University. In spite of the fact that I feel sad that not much is happening in Aligarh, but still, whatever little has happened so far in India, in the post-independent India, it, is, it has happened at Aligarh. And I admire the vision of Sir Sayyid the Great, who established this university. At that time, he had said that Muslims are 50 years, you know, away, or their, their education level is 50 years less than that of their com other compatriots. I think that situation, maybe more than 100 years later, is even worse than what it was in the days of Sasaya. So thank you very much. I'm sorry. The time was, uh, if I had more time, I would have explained it in a much better way. But I had done it very quickly. Thank you so much. <laughs>